Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone! Welcome back to another video with me, Tamara Laporte from Winnipeg Art, your local art fairy. And I'm back with another episode of, you may have guessed it, Finish a Journal. I think we're on episode 12, which is again quite a feat for someone who doesn't tend to stick to to um, episodes of any kind. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of myself. So welcome back. Happy New Year. I know we're already in February, almost March, but hey, um, I tend to run behind on those sorts of things. Life as usual, a chaos. A chaos and a blur. So it goes by very quickly. So I'm back today with another episode of Finish a Journal. And I also was just going to do a bit of a, uh, like a studio update or the, or the art I've been working on, both single sheets and in the journal. And then I also have a little um, special unboxing of some new art supplies that I'm really excited about trying out. I'll talk about these in just a moment, but first off, let's start with um, talking about what I've been doing with my time lately. Yes, so, uh, well, let's just first talk about art, the art journal, because I have noticed for myself, since the, la the last episode, when I looked at the, uh, the last episode to see how much um, journaling I've been doing, how much journaling I did then, and how much I've done since, it's similarly to the last episode. I've actually not been working in art journals that much, but I was working in it more than I thought I had. So I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that, and that, and that, but I haven't been filmed any of it. So... I'll do a little uh, updated flip through in just a moment and I want to talk to you as well about gessoing watercolour pages because actually that's quite a s specific thing. Um, so yeah, gessoing pages in this journal is actually for me quite a specific thing so I want to comment on that a little bit too. So let's just have a look at my other pages and then we'll go through the journal and do a little bit of playing and planning and swatching the new art supplies as well. And yeah, I hope you enjoy hanging out with me for uh, maybe an hour or so. So for those of you who are not on Lightbook this year, you can still join. So if you see anything you like, we're, we're, I'm teaching um, quite a few of these pages that I'm going to show you on Lifebook this year. We're having a lot of fun. Links, are, as always, are in the description below. So this um, painting, what I'm so happy with, is the first main lesson for Lifebook this year. And um, yeah, I just was very happy with how it uh, came out. I'm really experimenting, continuing experiment, experimenting with specific color combinations that I really love. And so the teal, orange and uh, red violence in this me to my heart sing. I'm so very happy with this painting. Then for Lifebook as well, we've been um, exploring doing animals and in slightly more realistic, I suppose, because many of you are used to seeing... Um, was that a bit dark? Let me just bring that back, because that looks a bit dark. So here's this more, a little bit more lighter. So many of you are used to seeing my stuff that is a little bit more whimsical. And this, uh, I've also, this the, the since the end of last year, I've been really experimenting with doing more realists. Well, I say realistic, of course, elephants aren't green. But I mean, shape-wise, more realistic looking animals in kind of expressive and colourful, uh, making colourful portraits of them. And I've just been loving doing this. So I'll show you some other animals that I've been doing. So, excuse if I've already shown them before, I may have done, but... I cannot at a call. So here, uh, this is a hare. Yeah, I may have shown this before, sorry. But anyway, these types of uh, expressive um, animal portraits are really lighting up my life at the moment. And if all goes well, there's going to be a course on how to do these in April uh, this year, 2023. So again, if you're interested in a course like that, if you want to learn how to make these amazing expressive animals uh, with watercolour and acrylic inks, do um, join the newsletter, in fact, which is, again, you can find the link below, and then you'll be notified of when this course goes live. And that's, uh, here's an animal. See, that's the other elephant. So we'll do basically paintings like that that I'm just showing you. There's one other animal in here. This is a very recent painting I've made as well. Beautiful fox here, very colourful, very expressive. I'm really, really enjoying working expressively, but in combination with sort of slightly more realistic uh, shapes. So that's what I've been kind of um, really, really working on, as well as I've continued doing my kind of high contrast portraiture uh, and combining that with, or contrasting that with, 
an abstract element and including floral and botanical uh, shapes. And I'm, again, really enjoying this. This lesson um, has gone live on Lifework only three weeks ago, uh, around about the 6th of February or something. So again, if you join Lifework and you love this, then you get a lesson that shows you step by step in detail how to create a painting like this. So do come and join us if you think, I'd love to learn that. Oh yeah, then the other thing I've been doing is I've been really play, playing uh, with abstract again a little bit and just doing warm-ups. This is quite a, it's kind of a warm-up. For that same lesson, for this lesson, we actually I include a warm-up uh, where we play, we just play with, with inks and acrylic inks and watercolour. And then some, for one session, we just kind of try to find and draw floral shapes on top of it. Here's another one. This is my favourite, actually, out of the three. It's just so simple. Not a lot is done, but it's such an effective little page. And the point of it wasn't to make an effective, nice little page. The point of it was to just play around and do a little warm-up. And it is in those times, often, when you don't get attached to an outcome, right? That you actually make some, some really nice stuff. Yeah. So, again, if you're interested in that, do come and join us because we're exploring all sorts of things. And here is a very, very cute whale that I adore. <laughs> this is, again, also was done for life. So loads of my stuff currently is done for uh, lessons or summits. The fox is actually going to be done on a summit, so you can also join that summit. But basically, if you want to stay up to date with everything I do, come and join my newsletter, which is down below in the description. -y. Okay, so that's, uh, I have done a bit more, but I thought those are my highlights. Those are the highlights of my, um, of the, 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 the latest art that I've done. Okay, and so here's my journal. Um, for those of you who don't know what is a finisher journal, I started to <laughs> finish a journal 20 million years ago, not quite, not quite. A couple of years ago, or maybe three years now, and I challenged myself to finish a journal as I have the tendency to start a journal and not finish it. I just leave sketches untouched and I feel really sad about that because I go through my journals and go, oh yeah, that was, yeah. I love that, but oh no. And I would love, love, love to just have a journal that I love and have fully finished. And at some point I was working at in two or three at the same time, which made it harder to finish them because <laughs> lots more space to fill up. And so I've narrowed it down to the one journal that I must finish. And this is the one. So, uh, I'm going to talk to you about it because I've done some interesting stuff so far in it and we're going to do another journal, a page in it today and maybe even two, I don't know, we'll see how we go. And I wanted to talk to you about, you see these little fluffy the little tissues are sitting here because I decided to just gesso some pages because that's the thing for me. Quite often there's an unfinished um, drawing, painting, whatever on a page and actually I don't quite like it and I don't really want to work on it anymore but then I say well you must finish it one way or another so next time when you do something you have to finish that and I just lose such passion, I lose the passion for it that I then just uh, never want to work on it. So I've now just decided to gesso over those pages so that I have um, new pages. However, gessoing over watercolour means that really, see, watercolour doesn't really grab hold of gesso in the same way that it grabs hold of normal watercolour paper. So it's not um, a great solution to the problem, other than the fact that I probably have to use acrylics to finish those pages. That said, because of that issue, I recently bought this um, watercolour ground, which is basically, I thought, was going to give me a if I if I painted that over over the background I thought it was going to give me a very similar surface to actual watercolor pa uh, paper but really I I don't think it really does so I'm going to talk to you about that now because today I will use I have gesso basically I've gessoed two spreads with normal gesso white gesso and I have gessoed one spread with watercolor ground and I want to show you how it absorbs differently and then you might make those decisions as well. But the best still for me is to have proper proper paper. I don't, so far I don't really like the watercolor ground from what I can gather. Okay, so let's go through the journal again. And so this is this is the page I did last time for finish a journal, really happy. So this the first spread I'm fine with, yay. No, don't need anything with it, don't need to do anything with it. Oh, this has probably happened yesterday. This spread, also cool, could do a bit more here, but really I'm fairly fine with how it is. So that, that little smudge happened yesterday, I think. Drop some water there. Oh, here. Basically, check it out. I gessoed it. But you see that? This has got three layers of gesso on it. And Tombow markers, 
are, when it comes to this, our nemesis, I love Tomba Marcus so much, but they leech through everything. You cannot see, I cannot seem to, 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 to cover it up with anything. But at least it's a lot less now, of course, I've just got these two blue blobs, so I can work on these two pages. Um, the only way I know how to get rid of Tombo is by collaging it. Okay, so I've just out these pages, these are fresh, sort of new, and I will acrylic, I will acrylic over it. <laughs> Paint over it with acrylics at some point, not today. This page is not finished, but I and I I, can, I have actually worked on this in stages, and I will come back to it still. I think I will. I think I'll manage. This one I've shown before. I quite like, but it needs a bit more. It needs a bit more done to it. This is new, so I had forgotten that I started this. For some reason, I don't know. This is new, and I actually like it. It's kind of not uh, totally not finished. It's a bit odd, but it's kind of like I like it. So I, I, I'm gonna, I, I need some more work. I need some more work done on it. But it's what I quite like the awkward, the quirk, the quirkiness of it, the oddness of it. So I'm gonna work on that more. This is an old page that I spread that I like. This is an old spread that I really love. This and I told I talked about this last time. Some people suggested that if I didn't want to work on this side of the page, that I turn it round, and I regret that now. I mean, I, don't, I love this spread, but I regret that it's upside down. So there are about three or four spreads in here that are upside down, which I don't like, but okay, if I'm just accepting that I did do that. Okay, here is another gessoed, um, I'll take this out, gessoed spread, and it's stuck, these tissues stuck a little bit to it. Oops, oh well. And you can still see the original sketch through it a little bit, you see? Don't know if it picks it up, but it's not too bad. And um, so I, I think I would have to work, would want to work with acrylics on top of this, I think. Okay. Then this is another spread that I uh, actually gessoed over, but this is with watercolor ground. So this is the page I want to work on today, just to see how it'll absorb watercolor. And these are the new watercolors that I was sent by the kind people at Paul Rubens. I think, I think that that's their... The name of their business as well. And these are uh, Paul Ribbon's Opera watercolor paint set. Four colors in five milliliter tubes. Oh, only four colors. This is a very big thing for only four colors. Surely not. No, 14 colors. It says. Sorry, 14. I was just going to say. It says four here. That's weird. Maybe it's a misprint. Anyway, so I want to, and also I already found, because I was drawing this, on, I don't like drawing with graphite on anything gessoed, because it just really, it's hard to erase anything, and like on paper, it's much easier to erase stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's a bit of a meh. But I thought we do, I want to do a high contrast portrait on this, and then just see how I got, like it's hard to erase it, and not smudge. Anyway, we're going to do, I want to do a higher contrast portrait on this and with the new watercolors and see how we go. Ooh, so that's a new, I have basically, I, I gessoed over this. There were sketches under this that I didn't like and I thought I'll just gesso over it with watercolor ground and then I'm going to start a new sketch. Okay, so we're going to work on that in a sec, or I am. And then here we have another portrait that I absolutely adore. This was done for Draw This In My Style. That's also on my YouTube channel. I've filmed this if you look interested in it. Have a look around on the channel, on the channel, you know, and put some thumbs up for me, please. And do a subscribe if you're new here. I would so deeply appreciate it. Okay, uh, nice spread. I like it. Nice spread. This was done for a taster session. Love it. Could do maybe a little bit here more, but mm, it's fine. Color, I love the color combination. There's a lot. This is my, one of my favorite color schemes. The orange, the teal, and a bit of pink, or opera pink, or magenta. Love that. This is new. So many of you may recall, if you're following this series, and uh, I could understand if you've forgotten the last ones because it's been such a while, um, that there was a sketch here of this girl and it, the hair sort of went this way and I kept saying, I like the sketch, I can't seem to find it in me to um, paint her. That just became the... I just was not interested in painting her. I still could, maybe I'll do a bit today. And then I created her. And I really like her. But she's also a bit sort of unfinished and sort of not quite something. But I really quite like her and, and I think she had tears here and then I made them... Like I played around with this one and she's... I don't know, there's something about her that I really like. But this is unfinished, so I could maybe work on her a little bit today as well. 
This is another, this is at some point I was doing a very similar, like these were all in the same style, the reds and the oranges together, and I really enjoyed doing this series. So these are kind of in that same style. Um, high contrast, but only working in analogous reds, pinks, and oranges. This is one of my favorite spreads. This spread is also on my YouTube channel. A lot of these, these that you see in this journal are all time-lapsed on my YouTube channel, if you're interested. This one I love. Hands, they are not easy. I thought I'd, my, I did them quite well. <laughs> and this is a completely different style. This is done in acrylics, mostly, in a muted tone, also on the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, so I worked actually on this last night. There's just a bit of, I was just playing around and uh, I had a new red. This is a very different red to what I normally use. And I just quite like to, this is a little bit, uh, if you're familiar with, um, Gustav Klimt, Klimt and uh, what was the guy's name of the same time? Um, Art Nouveau guy. Uh, you know that, I don't know, if, you, if you're really familiar with it, you'll know what I mean. This is a sort of that style. And I also used a different kind of blue. So the color combo is very different from what I've been using previously before. Anyway, this is a sketch also that's been sitting there forever and I didn't want to, didn't want to touch it. I, was, I didn't quite like the face. But last night I was just like, wanted to do something quick. So I started on this. And I like messing around with eyes, giving them that kind of odd, these odd sort of pupils. Okay, so that this I feel is actually finished, but I think this you could you know I want I was thinking like maybe I'll do a bit of like urban sketching here or something because it just seems like a waste of, of of white. So maybe on all of them that have a bit more white, I can do little urban sketches, or maybe I do like a little sketch of like a cup or something, something more like not here, but like this one could have something here, maybe a tree, something that is unrelated that might be nice, and then this gets becomes a really full sketchbook. <laughs> All right, this one is full enough, and I like this one, I think. This also might be on... This might be on YouTube as well. This one I really don't like. I just don't like how it is, and I might actually gesso over the whole thing. I can't see myself fixing it, is what I'm saying, so I might gesso over it. This was done for a challenge. I was using the... I was challenged to use the word hedgehog. I like this a lot. I feel this could do a bit more. Maybe I'll extend the mountain area, but I, I'm fine with it as is. This one I love a lot. This was also, this was done for Summit. Can be found on the channel as well. And this one, <laughs> I think this is also on the channel. I basically think that all the, or <laughs> three or four of these orangey pink faces are on the channel. Then this was done for Woman Unleashed. Might, it's also on the channel, I think. So a lot of this is actually, that's kind of nice that you can find all of the uh, creation of these on the channel. And I like this one, but I don't feel it's like finished. And the same for this one. This was done, this started as a lesson, uh, like a live on, for Lifebook, but I have not, I don't have anything in me that wants to finish it. So I might just over this one. And then this, though I like this one, I feel it doesn't fit with the entire book. Like I'm not saying that all these are, that they fit together. For instance, like you have the muted tone, this one, you know, it doesn't really fit in there, but this one is so different. I don't know what it is, but I just kind of don't want it in this book, which is maybe very unfair on this girl. Okay, and then this is the final spread, and this is, I like this, but there needs to be more here. So maybe I'll do another girl or something at some point, because there's so much space. So here we are, another round of Finish a Journal. And for those of you who've been following me for a while, must admit, hopefully, that I am making progress because look, there are really only, let's see how many spreads there are left that I feel like need something. I'm gonna count one, two, uh, no, I'm gonna count the ones that still need it. So one, two, that needs to be finished, three, only a little bit's done, four, four, five, six, Maybe something here, seven, eight, maybe nine. 10, this needs to be finished, 10, 11, 12, 13, sort of, 13, 14, maybe 15, 16. 16 pages, but some of them only need a little bit, like I want them to, have something on the side, out of, that's probably half, I think. I can do it. I just want one journal that is completely full and that I like. 
Okay. Right, so now let's now have a look at the paints and then I'll swatch them and then we'll use some of them to do my painting and we'll do that in time lapse. Ooh, so I'm very excited about find, uh, discovering new watercolor paints. So, and you can buy them if you're interested. I haven't, I don't get any affiliation. There's no affiliation other than this is sent to me for free. The way it works often with artists is you get set, sent out supplies for free and then they ask you would you please review them on your channel that's just for transparency I'm explaining that sometimes we get an affiliate link like with Arteza I think I have one and this one is just sent it to me and asked and then I agree to that uh, but I'm also just really excited to try out some new art supplies right so many of you know that uh, my favorite um, watercolor brand is Schminke and also Daniel Smith I enjoy their vibrancy and uh, I have tried out other art supplies, other watercolors as well, Windsor Newton, Arteza, they're all, you know, pretty good. Some of them are a little bit more student grade, others are very kind of professional grade. And um, I, what matters to me when it comes to watercolor is the vibrancy of the colors. And so the pigmentation, like how much pigment really is in the... Is there a sticker? No. I like the box. So I'm trying to get it to open it by shaking it, but it won't come out. <laughs> okay. So yeah, how the, the pigment, the pigments, how, how pigmented really the paints are is matters to me. Come on. Okay. All right. I, can, I think I'm getting it off now. Here we go. Okay. So let's have a look at this. Paul Rubens who was obviously a famous painter from the olden days. What is it, 17th century? I cannot remember. Um, this is in a language. Oh, cool, we got a swatch thingy with it. That's awesome. So that's excellent. I didn't know that. I love it when I can make my swatches in the card that they provide. Um, there's no, uh, this is, I assume, Chinese. I don't know how to read this. Um, or Cantonese. I don't know, Mandarin. Um, and anyway, they, they do have the names of the colors here, so we can do swatches, which we're going to do now. And let's have a look. Oh, nice. Ooh, and oh, it's got a velvety box. That's lovely. So these are actually now that I recall, I think these are mo a lot of these are uh, fluorescent, if I remember. And they're actually all called Opera, Opera, Opera. So we have Opera Yellow, Opera. Take it out. Opera Yellow. Opera Rose, Opera Violet, Opera Blue, Opera Light Red, Opera ro Orange Red, Opera Golden, Opera Orange, Opera Pink, Opera Red, Opera Peach, Opera Purple, and... Ow! Stabbed me! Opera Ultramarine and Opera Green. Very cool. So I was thinking of tr doing maybe this... Um, I have my own... You can buy these loose, these ones. You know, the little tins. I'm going to swatch it with you. I'm going to swatch and I'm going to put these in a little box so that I can keep them. I don't have a tin. I want to actually get a proper tin for new, you know, new watercolors because then they don't shake around. But for now, I'll just place them in a little box. All right, let's have a look. So, I is the ex I has the excite. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with the yellow. Let's see what it like. What it's like. Oh, so when you have those little, when it's closed, you know you can take the usually the top of the lid, and then it has a little pointy thing that you can means that you can click them open. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's coming out. And a big yeah. This looks fluorescent to me. I'll close it down. Very vibrant, which is nice. I don't, I haven't used, um, I, the only fluorescence I usually use is the Opera Pink in Daniel Smith. That, again, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that that's one of my fave colors. So, oh, now let's, well, they're not going to be that different, are they? So let's just, sorry, I was thinking, should I first um, make them, put them all in the thingy, or shall I, shall I swatch first? I'll swatch first. And when you have wet uh, watercolor, it's always a little bit different after they've dried, and then and then been applied. And when you because they I don't know they feel they feel a bit more sticky after they've or not I don't know I like it when watercolor is first dry and then I wet it to make it. <gasps> Ooh, sorry for my gasp, 
but that is very beautiful. Wow. Look how re reflective that is. Look, I, I, we do not have, I can't, don't think that any of the established brands have a fluorescent yellow. I is excited. Cool, cool. So, Opera, Ro this is Opera Rose. So, go. what is golden then? Okay, I'll go in the order. Oh, that, right, I'll go in the order that it's on the swatches. So, that's the first one. I'm gonna have to, I'll put that there. It's the thing, you have to kind of keep them in place, right? I need to buy an empty tin, you know, like an empty tin for it, but I don't have one. As the moment, uh, Opera Golden. Is it all? I can't remember now from the email they said they're all fluorescent. That would be quite a cool thing. Oh, yeah! <laughs> this is a fluorescent orange. Oh, super cool. Okay. Let me just come on. Oh. <laughs> you know what I was trying to do? I was trying to um, close the lid with the pointy bit on it. <laughs> Wrong way round, Tim. Okay. There, I'll put these to the side. This is awesome! Fluorescent paints! What? The only downside to fluorescent tech paints is that they don't scan well. Whew, super cool. Um, they are apparently some scanners that can do it and I'm actually looking into it because I would really like to be able to scan the fluorescent parts properly and the reason that is is because they've got um, they have a, a particular kind of mineral or something in them the fluorescent paints and so you know how a scanner sh do, uh, sort of sends a light across the bed well that means that obviously that um, it reflects the light back in a way that it means that it, you could, it doesn't pick up the color. So that's an issue. Okay, Opera Orange Red. Which one is that? This one. Oops. So really, if you've got... Is there such a thing as fluorescent red? I have not heard of that before. So I don't know if this is also fluorescent. Let's have a look. It is... Well, it looks very vibrant. You know the only kind of fluorescent colors that you sort of know, know of are the ones that you used to do, use for highlighters, right? You know what I mean? Like the, like your, ch -ch, you know, the one, and there were like three colors. There was yellow, orange, green, and pink. I can't remember there being this one, F fluorescent red, maybe, opera orange red. Oh man, this is pretty. Very nice. Okay, just watching that. Next one, Opera Orange, Opera Orange. This is a very fun thing. I actually love swatching. I give it, um, I recommend it for relaxation as well. And just, you know, getting to know your supplies. And I didn't used to do it. I used to just be whatever, very, um, random about everything oh sorry everything that I had and just sort of forget not checking out what really the colors are and now I'm very actively I actively do do swatches swatching because it is really helpful also particularly with watercolors that tend to dry dry sort of dark so you can't always recognize when they're dry what the color is so that's helpful but it's also just a fun really fun thing to do so this is the orange these these three look similar, but they're not the same. Really a distinct difference, in fact. That's a light orange, this is a redder orange, and this is a more, more of an orange orange. Super nice. So the only problem, you know what we're having, I'm actually placing them in the wrong order, or this is a... Uh, okay, let's see. So if I do it uh, this way, it makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, so I have to hold them like that in the future to be able to figure out what is what. Okay. Okay. Nice one. Opera Light Red. Next one. I'm just quite impressed with the subtle differences in the fluorescence because that's not normally how fluorescence is treated. It's kind of like, these are the four fluorescent colors. If you go to Golden, for instance, or any of the main brands, there'll be like three colors as fluorescent and here there are many more. And I quite like 
that uh, attention to detail in that sense. Okay, this is a red. What's it called? The opera light red. Is there a dark dark red as well? So nice. It's so nice. I totally forgot this. This was mentioned in the email that I was gonna get fluorescent ones, and I didn't sort of. I forgot that that was the whole thing. I just uh, forgot about it. Okay, next one. Opera red. So proper red. Um, again, you need you need to think because that the diff I like, like the subtle differences are normally that doesn't get done for fluorescent stuff. Whoa! It just pops out. <laughs> yeah, it, the subtle differences are. Oh, I don't know if this is fluorescent. Is this also a fluorescent? This looks like a proper normal one, but I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it's more like a pink. This is slightly more pinky, but I don't know if this is fluor. If you can call this fluorescent, to me this feels more like a really vibrant red pink, not sort of reflective. I don't know. Maybe it does have those particles in it, because what makes something fluorescent are particular, as I understand it, minerals or like mica. It's not mica, but specific. This is basically a different makeup of how fluorescence is uh, achieved. Some sort of mineral, I think it is. I still think this is a really beautiful color, actually. Okay, next up, Opera Rose. Let's see, no. This one. Yes. You have to get your little thingy ready because it it really you know bursts out when you prick it. Not all of them, the other one. Oh, the other one did, but this one then. Alright, let's see how vibrant this might be. Because the pink ones are usually very vibrant, but again, this doesn't look very fluorescent either. I would expect... this is pink though. Opera, no, Opera Rose. Yeah, this is pink. Opera Pink. Opera Rose in the Daniel Smith series is is reflective. It's fluorescent. Neon. So let's see what this does. I love the colors though. Oh! Oh! What? Okay, I am totally in love. Opera Rose people, check it out. I hope the camera picks up the, duff the different subtleties. That is so pretty. That's gonna have to go on the painting today for sure. Whew. Opera Pink, let's see what the difference is. I mean, maybe it's just a little lighter or, you know, the outer band often doesn't really re at all reflect what the actual inside the the tubes are often. So I, this looks like a bit of a muted, pink. I'm wondering if it's going to be a vibrant one instead. Let's take a look, see. Yep, yeah, vibrant, totally. <laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> look at that, it's so beautiful. Again, vibrant and it's just got that more, slightly more orange leaning um, pink. You see, if you compare the two, it's got a little bit more, I suppose, yellow in it. Um, I have a particular condition, I call it the condition, where my heart and my breathing actually changes when I engage with colour. It's very kind of odd, but I kind of find myself just in awe of colour and so in joy, like a, there's a joy that fills my chest cavity up. <laughs> so you can hear me deep, deep sighs because the colours are so incredibly beautiful. I find them beautiful. Okay, so maybe what I should now do is put it here so that it's aligned with the swatch. Because that's the thing, you want to kind of keep aligning it, yeah, so you know what is what. And this way, I'm not quite aligning it. Uh, this uh, is not quite aligned, but it's sort of aligned. I can figure it out this way. Opera Pink and Opera Rose in this series look absolutely stunning. So beautiful. Check them out. Okay. Opera Peach, my goodness, what might that bring us? What might it do? do, 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 do. What might it do? What might it do? Okay, let's open it up. Peach is usually like an orangey color. A tint, it's a tint of uh, orange. But not, <coughs> sorry, not in this one. This is actually redder. I don't would not call this peach. Peach is, 
absolutely a tint of orange, you not know, like a light orange, but that's okay. Sometimes we don't know how to name things. Well, I always think like uh, the person who names things in the in the art series is the must be interesting job. How are we gonna call that? So this is more to me a reddish color, reddish pink. It's called peach in here. Okay, this oh, it's actually it's kind of and it, it's kind of a mi uh, in between that one and that one. It's a very beautiful color. It's a tsunami called peach. Wow. Sim very close to the opera rose, but definitely not the same. That's what I like about them, that they do these subtle differences. Okay. Now we're going to get now to more to the blues and the purples. And then there's just one green. Okay, interesting. So the next one is opera violet. Violet is um, usually a red violet, meaning purple leans towards blue and the violets, or the red violets, lean a bit more towards red. And if you're interested in learning more about colour, I run a course every year called Kaleidoscope. Um, and uh, I go into deep, great depth when it comes to colour and colour theory and all the kind of subtle differences. And, and it's and I've done it in an interesting way. Because <laughs> people always think, oh my god, yawn, colour theory, that's what I thought. But I present it, uh, I have to say so myself, I've done my best to make it really interesting rather than boring. So look, this is red violet, clearly. It's called violet. Red violet is on the color wheel, the color that leans towards, um, it's the purple that leans towards red and it's a beautiful color. I used to not love it that much. And now it's one of my favorite colors. Same with, or, same with orange. I didn't really appreciate orange and now orange and red violet are some of my top rated colors. Love it. Very nice. Comes out good. But I don't think this is reflective. That's the thing. So you can really see that a couple of them are kind of like proper neon. The yellow, the, this orange. This has a neon in it. This has neon in it. This one I think has neon in it. This one I don't think it has neon in it. This one somewhat. That one is neon. Then this one is definitely don't think so. You know, like I don't know what the mineral if they've put a mineral in, but to me it doesn't look reflective. Okay. Opera purple, that should be more a bluey purple, meaning a proper violet. That's actually the proper violet, like on the color wheel they call that. They're called purple violet, but often violet gets used to re describe red violet. Anyway, so here we go. You can see the difference. You see, this is more of a bluey purple. That's more of a reddish purple. That's the difference there. But again, a lot of the times the names are not used properly by by some of the art supply producers. But hey, who cares about the names of the colors? are so amazing! Okay. Beautiful. These are all very, very vibrant and beautiful colors, I have to say. I'm very impressed. I had no, I'd never heard of the brand before. Never, never before. Uh, okay, next one. Ultramarine, that's a blue. That's a pure kind of sort of purish blue. Now blue, we've never seen in real, you know, that's what I'm, oh no, we did have neon. Yeah, we did have neon blue with the highlighters. I'm just thinking of the markers. Oh, so let's see what kind of blue this is then. Ooh, I don't think this is a reflect. That, that used to be light blue, remember? When you when you were marking your, um, you know, your schoolwork or something. This is more of a deep blue, like an ultramarine blue. And it, I do not think it's reflective. I don't know if you can, you know, I don't know if all colors could become, could be made into a reflective something. I have no idea. I don't know about that technology. This is a proper ultramarine, you can see. It's nice. But it's not, don't think it's neon or reflective. Which again, I'm not looking for that specifically. <laughs> I just thought, oh my God, I think the whole thing is neon. But actually, more than I thought are neon, but not all of them. But very beautiful, vibrant colors though. All right, opera blue. Nearly there now, nearly. Opera blue, I have no idea what they're doing here. Is it indigo? Is it, oh no, it's okay. It's more of a, turqu leaning more towards turquoisey blue. More like a slightly more green in there. Slightly more green in that blue. And yeah, I don't know if this is going to be, and it doesn't look reflective or neon in the pot. 
but it is a nice turquoisey kind of tealy, leaning towards teal color. Very beautiful color. I lick it. Final one, green. I assume it's going to be vibrant because that's that could, can be a very ne neon color, can't it? That's how we, one of the brightest ones in the in the series of the on the of the high the light the the highlighters. No, that doesn't look. Maybe I don't know. Let's look. Could be still. Could be. Could be. Let's see. I'll say no, but it's still very beautiful and pigmented. But I don't know if it's going to be reflective. Oh, could be. Could be. Let's see. Oh yeah. It's definitely yeah more vibrant and reflective than let's say that purple. Wow, very beautiful. Okay. That is kind of awesome. Okay, so let's have a look. Here you got here if you got if you got the all the whole series. I'm gonna give myself a tin where I can put these in and then arrange them perhaps sort of more so or exactly in the same way so I can remember what is what. Right now I can kind of go, if I do this, I know that that's that row, right, that row. And then if I do this, I know, and I have to move this round, <laughs> I know that, that that's, that's that row, right? So that's helpful. But uh, It'd be cool to get a tin and then keep them in place. All right, well, I'm very uh, pleasantly surprised by this... Um, by this, these pot wood colors, I must say. Now let's just see them. Like let's use them in my journal. And again, they have asked me to put the links in to the description if you're interested in them. They are in the description below where you can get them. Um, let's see. I love the subtle differences between the oranges and the reds and the pinks. I really like that. And I have to say, I like all their colors so far. Seem very vibrant, which is obviously something I really love. Okay, so let's. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. And then uh, paint the face that I've pre-drawn in the journal. And I'm going to do a high contrast face. And yeah, let's see if uh, if you want to paint along. Feel free to paint along. That would be lovely. And if not, then maybe I'll uh, see you around. Also, if you wanted to join any of my if you wanted to join any of my um, classes, please come and visit me on www.willowing.org. I also uh, love it if you became part of my Facebook group, Willowing and Friends, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well. I'm pretty much on much of the social medias. And again, also, lastly, if you love this video, please um, put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm so appreciative of comments and likes and loves and, and thumbs up and subscribes as that helps us uh, continuing to do the, the work that we do. So thank you so much. So uh, again, I'm gonna time-lapse the rest of this, paint, uh, this, this video with perhaps a voiceover or some subtitles. I just wanna say before painting, check this out. So I've just dried the, all these swatches and check out how all of them stay incredibly vibrant. So my experience of watercolor is that they tend to fade as they dry. And I'm wondering if each of these colors does have some kind of an extra mineral in there. That means that they stay vibrant. Because this has not faded in the way, same way that some, this one a little bit, but that some other watercolors do. So that is actually a real bonus. All right, let's get started on the painting. <laughs> Okay, well, hello there. Here is voiceover Tam. And uh, I'm starting here with um, a color in the Schminke series. It's a sort of a peachy color for, to, for, the, for the skin tone. But immediately I have to let you know that I am not enjoying at all how the um, watercolor is responding to the watercolor ground. So I remember actually doing this once before and kind of I think I blocked it out because <laughs> it was actually quite a horrible experience for me. Um, and uh, so I, I didn't try this out again, but I, it was a while ago and I think I've really forgotten how really badly it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I don't know if you can really see it in the ca on the camera or if the camera picks it up, but the watercolor kind of sits on top of the of the watercolor ground and it doesn't really respond or react or behave 
in the way it does when it's on normal, proper watercolour paper. So immediately I'm thinking, oh, I don't really like how this is working. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of thinking, let's keep going, I'll figure it out. And normally if something like this does happen for me, I actually tend to turn to um, acrylics because acrylics, they are a very different beast. They react very differently and they can basically be manipulated in the, the, the same way, no matter what sur surface I paint on. Uh, so if, be it on gesso or on top of watercolor paper or mixed media paper, I can pretty much wield it. Is it wield or yield? I never know. Wield, wield. Wield it. <laughs> there we go. However way I want. And so after I've been sort of struggling with the watercolor, as you can see, look how blotchy it like leaves it behind. I'm really so on not liking it at all, I decide, okay, let's just start bringing in some acrylics. But I try to do it sporadically and I'm kind of mixing because I really am so excited here about um, trying out the, um, the beautiful new paints, the beautiful new watercolor. So I'm kind of mixing it up um, in a moment. You'll see that I grab the watercolors again just to kind of, I think what I thought to myself is I'll, I'll try and do a bit of acrylics in the, on the skin, on the face and, and um, tidy up the blotchiness and then I'll bring in the new neon colors again something like that so basically here is I'm struggling basically I'm struggling here oh this is actually quite nice some bits I like okay oh that's nice and oh because what I'm so I'm so excited about bringing in these neon colors right and look how pretty they do look at this point but it's kind of against this kind of neutral browny gray um colors that I'm not enjoying and really I end up and in a moment I'm um, I will switch back to to uh, Tam that was filming this, uh, not uh, a voiceover Tam, and you'll hear me say that uh, it's the color scheme that actually in the end bothers me a bit. But not just that, it's how yeah, the paint's been laid down on this strange kind of gesso-y type watercolor ground. I mean, you know, it's not a, it's not a total disaster and some some people might think actually I really like it and that's obviously always the case when we are we we like we make some where you don't like it and other people do that can happen but um I really had I was really struggling with what was happening here and I just kind of tried to keep going and keep going and in just a moment you'll see that I give up on the thing not in not in fully I give up on how I'm going what I do instead is I rebuild the face with the critics so yeah so um, hate is a strong word, but it was, I was sitting there going, I don't know what I'm doing, what is happening, I don't like this anymore. And the biggest struggle really here is the watercolor ground. Now, not when I'm doing the acrylics, but, but at this point, I'm still just sort of applying acrylics um, in, a, in a little way, in a sort of a smallish way. Then I thought, oh, let me bring in some color pencil. Maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll um, improve some of what I'm not enjoying and also some Posca pens for detail and, and mark making. Um, you know, and I, I think it goes through phases. You know, all of uh, all of us artists will know what we call the ugly face. Um, and then we kind of work through that and then it becomes better. And sometimes you go through several ugly faces. <laughs> and um, for me, this went through several or it's not so much, it's not so much ugly as just not doing what I wanted it to do. And um, yeah, so I always struggle really with whenever I have to use watercolor on top of something else, it be it either on top of acrylics or gesso or now watercolor ground, um, it doesn't behave in the way that I'm used to and then I get quite frustrated with it. Okay, so here I'm using some acrylic inks thinking, oh, let me, I don't know, do something wild and crazy on the left of the face and then I'm getting even annoyed with how that reacts to the watercolor ground, so I'm picking that up. <laughs> with tissue and it becomes this big mess check it out <laughs> like it's all salvageable everything that we do if it is does go wrong it's salvageable one way or another eventually you know if you even if i had ended up not liking this i could have just just out over the whole thing again and you know and that's fine but i'm not giving up on this one and here i think it's the the sort of darkish blue the um the indigo as well that i really don't like against that kind of pinkish color so I'm struggling so hard here. You can see how I'm trying this, I'm trying that. I'm even dropping white little swirls into the purple here on the, the red violet. Not loving that either. All of the decisions I started making were just like, nah. <laughs> and that happens. Okay, I'm pausing here for a moment. 
and I uh, want to make some comments because right now I'm having a really annoying time. I'm actually really not enjoying uh, working on the watercolour ground. So I actually remember I have once, I've used it once before and maybe I just do not know what, what you, how you're meant to use this but my very basic understanding of how you use something like this is that you would put it down on a piece of paper and then it's going to react well to watercolour. Instead, <laughs> it's, I don't know if you noticed, but it just sort of, the watercolour just sort of sits on top of it. It's almost like it's a proper gesso. So I'm really disappointed with oh, this watercolour ground. Absolutely does not do what the paper does. So I'm really struggling getting wet watercolour to work properly. So as you saw, I started to, um, I started to try and fix it with acrylics, which is okay, but now I'm not enjoying the color scheme and I'm basically having a hard time really liking this painting at all. So, you know, hate is a strong word, <laughs> but I am close to just, ah, just having over the whole thing again. And here's something about the colors that I'm, because I've been like playing with the new, the, by the way, the, the watercolors I actually love. I love the colors, but I'm not so enjoying the combination of the color, color, color combinations that I've chosen at the moment. That's obviously me. Um, and so I am going to give it another whirl and I'm going to try and, and make this into something that I actually like. I think it's salvageable, but it's not going to be easy and straightforward. So... I thought I'd show you how I might fix something that I'm really not quite enjoying. I'm sure this is always an interesting... I always in, enjoy seeing how other people do that. Um, and I might, I don't know, I might end up just sewing over large parts of it and then just finishing it in acrylics because it's so hard to... See, water, like I said, watercolour over anything other than just watercolour paper I find not so enjoyable. Um, and and I had hoped that this watercolour ground was going to be less of an issue, but it's actually worse, I feel. <laughs> Makes it worse. So I'm just gonna kinda try and fix it, and I'm basically now working in acrylics mostly. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just see what I can do to make this into a painting that I actually like. Alright, well you're getting to you're getting a real insight into my my process here today. So we'll time lapse the rest and uh, see how see how see how I get on. <laughs> I need you to cheer me on, all right? <laughs> so I can hear you all cheering. Tam, Tam, we believe in you. <laughs> okay, so here, yeah, I um, acrylics for a long time was not my friend, and I befriended it much more in the last four to five, six years, maybe, maybe less so, less. So I am now going in heavy with the acrylics to sort of bring myself back to an earlier stage in a way. And I'm going to kind of reapply uh, some of the shading, but just more mildly and mostly with acrylics. And kind of the rest of the hair and the outer surrounding areas can stay pretty much as they are. But I just wanted the face to kind of be, um, I don't know, dump something. I was just working on doing something different that I would uh, enjoy more. And again, you know, technically this face may have been fine and some people may have really liked it. It's more that I, whenever I say um, I want to fix it, it's because I don't like it. And then I just go, well, I want to create something that I like and I have a connection with. Even if the previous painting wasn't technically maybe, you know, incorrect or anything. Um, but for me, it's always important that I have a connection to the to the face or to the thing I'm, I'm painting. And I think it's really interesting, actually, to look at why we like things and why we don't like certain things. Um, it's, I think that can go quite deep, like our own work. When we make something and we don't like it or we do like it, I think there's quite a depth of um, interesting kind of psychology behind that. And that's a story for another time, morning glory. All right, so basically here I actually took a bit of blue and mixed that with the peachy tone and created my own kind of neutral tone to create a bit of a sh uh, shading color. And then I also used that red violet that is on the hair as a shading color as well. 
And so now the face is already quite a different sort of um, experience. It's more of a softer, ethereal, a little bit ghostly face. And I already love it a lot more. I don't know, the, the, the colors are... The, the, the bright pink has been muted back, as you can see. I really didn't... Not, not in the background, but that bright... And a little bit on the cheek. But there was... The, the skin tone on the face was a very bright neon pink, and I didn't like that. So that's been uh, muted back, and now it's more of a whitish, grayish peachy kind of skin tone and that makes a bit difference for me and also the features are a bit softer uh, I'm using I've used quite a bit of scrubbing here scrubbing is a technique where you blend with um, the, the a, a sort of a damp brush and you get a, a kind of a, a gradient type of shading happening there so yeah now I can feel my whole even when I was watching it now as I'm re really looking at it I feel my whole body relax it's fascinating isn't it I don't know for how if it's similar for you all who are making art that you have you get kind of either a uh, yeah you have physical reactions to your own creations and you're either happy or they make you relax or they make you more tense this sort of stuff as well and look, and now I'm like, oh yeah, that's a softish face that's peering. Like I could now, I'm thinking this is more like a mermaid. She feels like a mermaid in an ocean with that watery um, background on the left. And she's sort of emerging from somewhere or something like that. And it's, I think the biggest jarring th element for me here was the pink in the skin tone. It was not right. And then also the, the shading I did was quite harsh because I used quite um, a lot of pencils and on acrylic pencil pencil on top of acrylic can be quite uh, coarse as well so the lines you can't get them subtle so yeah okay I I'm gonna pause here I am a lot lot happier with this spread right now one of the things I think that actually was bothering me was the color combination and color choices um, as well as how, how the uh, was the um, the watercolor ground was was not helping at all but the color combination was also doing my head in a little bit because I just kept grabbing all the nice new fluorescent stuff which is actually all beautiful colors but I didn't really think through combining it I just kind of went oh let me try this let me try this so I had and orange and yellow and bright pink in it and then I did the, the you know the blue you know so it was a bit over the top and the, pa the face as well had like a, a kind of a a pink skin tone that I don't didn't enjoy. So there was color combinations were disturbing disturbing me. It's a bit strong <laughs> that I didn't like. And now having used acrylics on the face and uh, tight, tidied that up a bit, I feel a lot happier with this um, chaotic <laughs> spread. Feels like a um, I don't know an underwater mermaid type character or something. So I wouldn't say that this is like my favorite spread in the in the book, but I'm feel much more happy where I'm at at the moment with this one but look the other thing that did happen you know how I I kept quite a lot of inky stuff kept puddling here so that seeped through on the other pages unfortunately here and here and that's it just luckily only on two spreads I'll fix obviously here it can be fixed this is a bit unfortunate but it's also it's not a disaster so um yeah I'm much happier with it now than I was in the earlier stages I was really considering just sewing over it so I'm much happy with this now and I thought as a final thing I might just because I now that the these these are dry these have dried in their tins I thought we'd do a little bit more painting with actual watercolors because I did do obviously some watercolors but it didn't it didn't show up on the on the correct I just want to see what they do on normal watercolor paper rather than watercolor ground which shouldn't be called watercolor ground so I'm going to choose another kind of page where, uh, for instance, I could do something here or I could maybe start painting her a little bit. That might be an idea. So I might paint her a little bit just with those uh, paints and see how, how that goes. Okay, back to uh, voiceover Tim again. So I'm on and off with going back to my um, voice from... In the in the in the real moment to voice over time. So finally here, I'm finally doing starting on this sketch, which is quite a big deal for me because it's been sitting there for years almost. And I'm basically mostly using the new uh, watercolors. And you know what? Look how beautiful they are. I did use a little bit of that peach from the Schmincke that isn't a neon color, but the rest here are all. Uh, I think I'm mostly using the new watercolors, and I definitely am enjoying them. Uh, and here it also didn't feel problematic to use 
And look, see, I'm working now on normal watercolour paper. And you see how it's sort of, I don't know if it's really noticeable for you because it's time lapsed. But the way the, pa the watercolour re uh, behaves on actual watercolour paper is deeply, deeply different from uh, how it was reacting and behaving on that watercolour ground. And so that's my favourite way of working with watercolours on actual watercolour paper. Um, and then, I don't know, some, I see all this combining of these bright colours works for me as well here. Now I'm doing this quite quickly so I don't even fully finish this um, this little painting, but I'm really happy with it. Um, I'm kind of like really loving letting the colours seep into each other, using some kind of pencil here to do some shading. It's very, very light, little, quick little thing. But, you know, much happier with this than I was with the other face, and the other face it only didn't work because that watercolour ground was under it and yeah the paint is reacts so differently. Now it could be that with watercolour ground it might well be that the brands make a big difference. I think some people, I think Daniel Smith has watercolour ground as well and this brand was Core, I don't know how you pronounce it, Q-O-R I think. So it could well be that maybe there's a big difference between the quality of watercolour ground amongst the brands. I can't, couldn't comment on that. I've only used that one brand, but um, my first experiences with it has not been positive. Color, the watercolours, however, are, my experience is very positive. I love this little face already. Look how beautiful. I mean, my thing is vibrant colours, so they couldn't have asked a better person to <laughs> to try these out because... You, you, this is, there's very few things in life that make me happier than vibrant colors. So yes, I'm very, very pleased with this watercolor set. So here I'm literally just kind of adding some color to the hair. I'll do some color to the little roses. And uh, I'm just like really playing around with the colors and the watercolor and the new watercolor set that I'm enjoying a lot. Um, I think I'm working with like four or five colors from this series in this spread. Like, so there's the hot pink. I don't know if it's exactly the name, but one or two hot pinks. There's some orange in there, then the blue and the purple. This is also nice to do a bit of scalloping. And... Okay, and so I'm using some watercolor, no, sorry, um, pencils there to add some shading, some black shading. This is an Arteza pencil, I think, just in black. And yep, back to those nice new wood colours uh, for the flowers. That's so like works so well, right? For flowers. Um, yeah. So this is this is coming out nicely. I like all this nicely done. Oh, I must have felt there was too much water on that flower there, and I dabbed that off a bit. Okay, back in with. Um, Acrylic markers, acrylics markers, the Bosca pens for highlights and details and and uh, line work. It's so enjoyable just playing around in the journal with pens and markers and paints and not watercolor ground. <laughs> Look, uh, maybe someone can explain to me if I've used it wrong or if there's something I'm missing here, but. It really, yeah, it felt like I was painting with watercolor on top of gesso, not not anything different from normal gesso, which never really works that well for me. Okay, so I'm deepening some of those uh, vibrant colors there in the the shading and and the cheek area, which I really like. It fits in in the style of the book. You know, the book has has a lot of these kind of very vibrant, high contrast portraits in them. And so this really fits, which I like as well. And I'm adding some color here to the flowers and the sort of chest area at the top. But I remember that I don't actually finish this page fully. I'm coming to the end of this video now, in fact. I think I'm just nicely finishing off this little page, although it's not really finished yet. It needs a bit more, but I will do that at some point. Just some more mark uh, line work with the, pos with the Posca pen. But I'm just sort of adding some final pink little dots there. And then we are going to be done. So, if you enjoyed this long video, <laughs> thank you for being here all this way. I really so appreciate um, you watching my video. And if you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing, leaving a comment and leaving a thumbs up. And I'd love to see you on any of my courses. Find me on www.willowing.org. Have a wonderful rest of your day.
Bye.